Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm Chuck, KK6USY, for Ham Radio Adventures. Now, uh, this week we're going to do a, uh, as the YouTubers group here, we're going to do videos on what a technician can do with their license. Now, I, I looked over YouTube just to get some ideas. Didn't find a whole lot of what they could do. I saw a lot of things about, I saw a lot of things that uh, showed you how to get your technician's license, stuff like that. So today in this video, I'm going to show you antennas you can use, radios that you have, you can use, uh, and whatever else I can come up with. So just to help the technicians along. And one thing I will say, if you don't have your technician's license yet, and you're going to take the test, study for your general also. When I took my test, I didn't even study for the general. I studied a lot for the tech. I took the general test and only missed it by six questions without studying. So they're, they're, that, those two tests are very similar. So if you're, if you're doing good on the tech, go ahead and study that general. Let's get on with the show and uh, we'll show you what we've got today. Thanks a lot for being here. This is uh, what I found for the uh, technician class, uh, Privileges U.S. Amateur from the AWRL. And the effective date is uh, March 5 of 2012. I'm pretty sure everything is still up to date here. If anybody can find a, uh, a newer one, please post it down in the comments. So on UHF, this is, you have a 1500 watt PEP maximum. Uh, most people can't do that anyhow, so it doesn't really matter. You're, if you get 50 watts out, you're going to be lucky. You got 23 centimeters, 33 centimeters, and 70 centimeters. I've, I've really never done, maybe I've done 70 a few times. I um, haven't done a whole lot. But you on 70 here, you, it says not available north of the line A. If anybody knows what that is, it says near the Canadian border. Please put it in the comments. I'm not sure exactly what they're talking about there. But you have from 430 to 450. Um, and in, and in both those sections, you can do sideband, AM, FM, and TV, and also CW and digital. Then we move down to VHF. Uh, same thing here again, 1500 Watts PEP maximum, uh, 1.2, 1.25 meter. Here's your, your 222 to 225. Um, basically all your privileges are SSB, AM, FM, TV. CW and digital on that one also. Now two meters starts looking a little different. From 144 to 144.1 is CW only. Then up to from 144.1 to 148 it shows sideband, AM, FM, TV, CW, and digital. Then on six meter, now six meter is one of your bands that uh, you have a, a lot of also. Two meter and seven. Actually, all these you have a lot of things you can do. There just won't be a whole lot of people there. Two meter side band uh, depends on where you're at. You might have some good luck. Six meter when the band's in for six meter, it's really good. Um, you can you know by watch you can uh, talk a long ways. And it's same thing. It's uh, 50, 50 point zero to fifty point one CW only. Then from fifty point one to fifty four. Megahertz, you got uh, sideband, AM, FM, TV, CW, and digital. Okay, here on HF, uh, if you look at it, you have a 200 watts PEP maximum. Now, here's where it gets a little different. 10 meter is one of the well, 10 meters here is one of the few bands you actually have some some good stuff you can do as far as phone. So uh, from 28 to 28.3. You can do CW, RIDI, and data. From 28.3 to 28.5, you can do SSB and CW. Now, when 10 meters open, you get a 10 meter dipole up, you will make some contacts. And almost every radio will do 10 meter. Now, if you're looking at new radios to buy, I would, I would suggest just to keep your options open, buy, a, buy at least a 10 meter to 6 meter. Or 160 to six, excuse me, 160 to six. That way, it, you have that option of six meter. And 
eventually the band's going to get better and things are going to get better. So up here on 15, 40, and 80, you have privileges also. Um, CW only, though. It's 21.025 to 21.2. Then on 40, it is 70.025, or 7.025 to 7.125. And then on 80, you get um, 3.525 to 3.6. So well, that's your frequencies. I will put a, a link to this in the in my description below. Um, I also put is in the description below videos that I have that would uh, well almost any video I've made will do a tech, but uh, I, I'll put the ones that mostly pertain to uh, the tech license. Then, if you're going to get your antennas up in the air, you're going to need some kind of a pole. Now. This pole here I got off at eBay. I think it was about twelve, seven to fourteen dollars a piece. I bought a bunch of them, and I, that's what I used for my Moxon antenna. This one here was about thirty-five dollars. It's a better antenna or a better pole. It's a Go Tour uh, Gold Light, seven point two meter. And this one I I think this was Soda Beams. Um, not, don't uh, may not be soda beams. I have two of these. One soda beams. One's another brand. And then I also have one like this that's black. It's a, a DX Commander. They're all about the same. Um, go, they'll get you about 30 feet. Okay. These are handy talkies, HTs, and I have them. The first two here are bail things. Those would be the cheapest way to get into ham radio. They're pretty decent little radios. I mean, they're not the best, but they don't cost a lot. I mean, you can get them for about, I think the one on the left I paid $25 for. And then moving up, the next one there is a FT60 from Yesu. Super durable radio. It's a little older, uh, very reliable. Good, good. A lot of people really love those. They're, they're pretty 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 sturdy radio and then the next one up and this to me is the easiest of all the little Yesus to or any of these radios to program from the front panel it's a FT 70 D it does two meters 70 centimeters just like that the first three but this one also does digital and it's the 60 and the 70 they're about hundred and fifty dollars usually so not a bad price for a good quality radio. Okay, and then the last one here. Let me move the camera. The last one here is the FT3D. Sometimes it says FT3DR. I don't know what, why there's a difference. Uh, that's the top of the line of uh, Yesu's brands. The, another brand that would be very really close to eight, Kenwood makes one. They're both APRS. I forget the number on the Kenwood. If I, I'll look it up and I'll put it in the in captions up above. But um, uh, that one's getting expensive, and I forget exactly. I got this thing for Christmas one year. They had a huge discount on it, and it was lastly less than the FT2D. So I pulled the trigger. All right. Let's look at a few other things here. Now, these are antennas for the HTs. These are the, the two on the left. Are uh, at, I bought these extra. These are just a little better than the stock antennas, usually. Um, this one's a Nagoya, I think, for the Balfangs. This one's a diamond. And then these are all the stock. I think these are all for the Yesus. I'm not sure. I got one too many though. Um, and these are just the stock rubber duckies. Okay. A couple options I bought for my bull thing were these right here. Now you see the, the hole in this one's pretty small. And I've, I read online someplace that making the hole bigger, you get a little better volume out of these. And they're not great, but they work. Now, my, when I bought my FT60, it came with a, a charger like this, 
or one you could plug in the side. If you do buy, if you do buy the FT70, the FT3D, buy the chargers for those like this because they charge faster. Nice thing about the ball fangs though, they come with it. And that's for the ball fang, bail fangs, whatever, however you ever call it. And for the bail fangs, I did buy extra batteries for them. Now this antenna, I showed it to you earlier, or sometime in this video. This is a J-pole, and you get on, you get a summit, you know, five, anywhere 4,000, 6,000 feet, however high you can get, and you use your, that antenna on one of your little masts that I showed you, and get it up about 15, 20 feet, and your little, you won't, you'll be surprised how well your HT will do. So for two meters and 70 centimeters, um, they're line of sight. So if you get up high and you're looking down on a valley, you can go a long ways with those. Okay, the first thing you're looking at right there is a bunch of adapters you're gonna need eventually. Um, the more adapters you have, <laughs> the more likely things are gonna work for you. So these are all our B and C's. This is a kit, this goes in my Allocraft kit, my KX2. This one, this one here, uh, when you look at that, it has the end there and the end there. That will set up for an antenna like this. And this is a J-pole. I've got a video on that also. But it makes it easier when you're doing your HTs, your handy talkies. Um, some of these will make it easier for you to hook them up. Okay, so now from left to right, QRP guys, infed half wave. And that'll, that will do, uh, I think it's, is it 80 through 10 or 80 through 6 maybe? Depends on if you have a tuner. It will with the KX2. Well, the KX2 won't do 6. Okay, and then you have, this is a video that I, I've, my very first video I ever produced. Um, this is a, a dipole but it's a linked dipole, which it's for 20 meters and 40 meters. You have these little clips, and here they are here together. You clip or unclip them to make it resonant on the band that you want, 20 or 40. Now this antenna here, this is, a, uh, this is the wire for my Moxin, my 20 meter Moxin antenna. That's a little more advanced. Um, when you get your HF license and you can get on 20 meters, unless you, do, unless you do CW. Now, if you're a, a new tech that does CW, that might be a great antenna. Now, let me move this over. Okay, this is a L and R Precision. It's a magnetic loop. Um, I wouldn't really, for a new ham, probably not, but later you might want it. They're, they have their own little niche. Um, they're kind of expensive for a new ham. Okay, what I'm going to do is show you three radios that I that I feel are entry level, that are really good deals. Um, if you're going to look at a brand new radios, the advantage is to brand new, you get a warranty, and usually the shipping is for free. I, I never seen the shipping wasn't free. So the first one, if if you don't, if you want to do just straight, 160 to six, probably the best deal you can do right here is the ICOM 7300. Now I'll probably catch some ribbon from guys in the YouTube group because. Um, I'm, I'm a ASU guy. I'll admit it. But uh, if I, if I, when I bought my 991A, if I was looking for not to do two meters and 70 centimeters, I probably would have bought this radio. And thing with the ICOMs, if you want to do two meters, 70 centimeters, and I'm talking ask just FM AM, but you want to do sideband also, you only have really two choices that are affordable. Um, ICOM makes a 9700. Uh, that's way up in price for most new hams. This one is probably is your cheapest one made now. Um, 899, 89, 899 and then a $100 mail-in mail rebate first. So for $800, you can buy this radio. It doesn't have a tuner and really it doesn't have a scope, a band scope. Um, it also is two pieces. You can buy a tuner for it, but then you'll have three pieces. Um, but if you're into D-Star, this is the way to go. It does D-Star. Now, um, so $800. So the 991A, $150. So what, it's 
uh, I, you, do, you do the math, it's not two, three hundred dollars or so. What the 981 offers, and the reason I went with it, is this nice scope here. And I will sh I'll show you a scope uh, some on some FM. It also has a built-in tuner. It's all one piece. Probably isn't any heavier than the 7100 total weight. But to me, if you're going to take it out on a parks on the air or anything like that, it's or camping with you, whatever, it's just easier. It's one piece. And it has everything built in. Now the tuner is only a three to one. It's not gonna. It's not gonna tune up everything. All right, I almost forgot this one. This is the FT eight ninety one from Yesu. It does uh, one sixty through six. The uh, doesn't have a tuner. It's a one piece radio, but the face comes off, so you can mount that separately, and then you can mount the body someplace else if you're uh, mobile. This is probably the be one of the best mobile radios out that's still available new um there's the old ones that you could get also but uh as far as we're just talking new radios here um the difference between this and the um, 7300 would be the 7300 for mm, what uh 300 and some dollar 350 dollars more gives you a tuner also but you can buy a tuner for less than that uh, plus plus the 7300 has the, the great uh, scope there this has a scope it's not very it's not very good, but uh, it works. So that's just another choice there for uh, any ham, not just new hams. Now this is an elk log periodic, two meter, 70 centimeter. Great antenna for uh, the new hams. Deck license. Now this is my two meter antenna that I built. I have a video on this, you can look it up. I'll link it down below. There's also another great antenna. You get up on a hill and use this, and it would work great for long distance on two meter. Two options there. All right, I hope there was something in this video that could help some of you new, uh, new techs, or even, even the people that haven't taken their test yet. Now, one of the best things you can do is put up an antenna if you have a radio and just listen to the band see how people use it and how they talk and uh, basically you just kind of get a feel of how it goes on on hf and uh that way when you do finally get your license and you can do the do the bands uh it just kind of gives you some experience and you're and hopefully the fright the mic fright there is not uh, as bad also as a technician you can do that uh, repeaters and stuff like that on FM. You can do some sideband uh, on 10 and 6, uh, 2 meter also. It's a little harder to do. Uh, Trying on a radio that would actually do sideband. But we talked about that. So if, if you got something out of the video today, please hit that, that like button. It helps the algorithm find people like you that, that want to see this kind of content. And also hit that subscribe button if you're new here. And hit that all button so you get future videos. This is Chuck. KK6USY for Ham Radio Adventures. I really appreciate you spending your time with me to watch the video and and uh, 73 is all and just be safe. See you at the next video.